What I saw wasn't human. Oh, my God! <laughs> Very tall. And what's more, it saw me. This thing. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back, ladies and gents, to another Rawhead Rex in PCs episode. I say another, this might be the first one you're listening to. We'll get to the tomfoolery that may have led to those words. Um, this is a sub-series of the podcast under this. We take the movie Rawhead Rex from 1986. We split up into five-minute reviewable chunks. The episodes will be much longer than five minutes because we're podcasters and we like to talk. Uh, but we're taking those five minutes, we're dissecting them with podcasters around the globe. This is, of course, a podcast under the stairs, which means there's an extra level of fuckery and complexity to the way we're doing this. I put all the episodes into a randomizer, and their release order has been dictated from that. So this might be the very first episode you're listening to. This might be the very last one. Could be somewhere in between. What I do know for certain is this one is covering minutes 50 through 55. It will start with David Duke at a gate looking back at his blue car. It will end with David Duke arriving with his notebook and as he heads towards a stained glass window. Book ended by the Duke. Joining me on this episode is my friend, my colleague, my fellow Scotsman, uh, the wonderful co-host of Jaws of Shite and other regrettable outbursts, one of the guys behind the Scott and Liam vs. Evil podcast is Liam Rafferty. How are you doing, Liam? I'm good, man. How are you? <laughs> I am well. We are not recording this right after your other segment. Consid- I know. <laughs> Consider- That's why I'm faking it. <laughs> <laughs> Considerable time has passed. Uh, yeah, we are here to discuss minutes 50 through 55. In fairness of the segments to get, you get child death. It's, it's not bad it's not a bad place to be in I will also say though you do get a lot of really bad acting by people that can act better than this so we will we'll lean into that uh, yeah you landed that awkward stage just now of the the midpoint in the movie where David Duke is taking his family away from all the trouble <laughs> you need to watch what you're saying when you mentioned Ireland he's taking them away from the troubles um, but they're going away from the trouble and then something just when I thought I was out Liam they pull me back and you son of a bitch you're going to kill my son that I will not be even remotely affected by for the rest of this movie <laughs> but you're going to do it anyway and for a second half a tear is going to roll down my face Um Let's get into this. Is a not a huge amount happens, yet a lot happens. Um, so we start off here with uh, David Duke's daughter is is away for a pee in the bushes. We've all been there, um, <laughs> and he's looking back at the blue car. And he turns around, he hears his daughter scream. He's behind the bush, 
she screamed. He turns around, panic. His wife, who is maybe, arguably, one of the most useless characters in this movie, <laughs> uh, she also jumps out her car and does the same. And they both run around and they find the daughter. And they, uh, the wife jumps around as well. They find her behind a hedge, uh, screaming at a dead bunny that's been eviscerated. Uh, which, to be honest, if I was a kid, that would traumatise me as well. Uh, but they both leave the son in the car just to read these comic books. The wife's like, what What happened? And Duke says, it's just a rabbit. And, of course, there's a decomposing rabbit on the ground. The wife says, oh, Jesus, because we just openly blaspheme in this movie. Um, and Duke instantly does the dad thing because she's clinging on to her mum and he's like, you got mama, okay? Like, <laughs> take the... Take the distraught child. I don't worry. I'm the man. I can't handle this. And Duke stands up and looks over the hedge at the car. Which, if you didn't know something was about to happen, this is the signal. When he meerkats above a fucking hedge looking at the car. <laughs> is everything alright over there? Um, and he leans back down as if nothing's wrong. Um, and the kid is reading this comic book. And then we get this great shot of raw head Rex. And all his cockeyed glory passing the like passing the fucking the window and the reflection is like Argh. but as like, I never read comics growing up. I, were you a comic guy? Uh, as with all my phases in life, I was a comic <laughs> guy for two to three weeks during different. Where you points owned in my every life. comic ever, ever <laughs> like ever. For, I must have them all like Pokemon. <laughs> they were all delivered to you. Like, I've never been, even with books, I, I, I love a good book. And even as a kid, I love a good book. I don't think I've ever been so engrossed by something that I wouldn't know it's a giant fucking feral monster walking past a window right beside me. Yeah. My peripheral yeah, vision is pretty good that way, where I'd be like that. Is that a fucking pagan monster? Oh, yeah, the pagan deities just walk past the car. I'm not safe now. Dad, you know what I mean? I, 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 it's... It's silly. Yeah. It's, it's up there in silliness with the next things that are coming up, to be honest. So. And with those ears, you think he would have heard Bo Hendrix <laughs> coming for about three miles away? <laughs> he's definitely he sonar. Seen. He's like, that. <laughs> I detect movement. I detect disturbance in the force. <laughs> There's a Raw Head Rex on campus. Um, basically, Raw Head Rex like, walks past his window and then goes to the next door and then's like, oh, well, there's no one in this seat. I'm just going to open this door and grab this kid. And he does. And it reminds me, like, I'll, I'm i a big League of Gentlemen like, fan. I fucking love the League of Gentlemen. And their Christmas special is one of my favourites because it's the most anti-Christmas thing ever fucking released by the BBC. Um, I don't know, next to Russell Brand's fucking carol singing or something, or Jimmy <laughs> Savile's, like, let's open presents. Um, it's like... It's so fucking dark, and the the bit that always gets me is the the priest, also played by Rishia Smith, who does a dual role, remembers her mum being kidnapped by Papa Larazu, and um, in this flashback, she basically sees like Papa Larazu come and grab his mum, and the camera pans down. And he sticks his tongue at his mouth and goes, ah, and it's the most, uh, he's, but he's dressed like Santa and it's the most anti-Christmas thing you've ever seen. This reminds me of this. It's straight up fucking surreal, weird horror. He like literally, op Rawhead Rex opens a car door, which in itself feels weird because he's a pagan deity before cars were invented, but he knows how to open a car door. And he reaches in and grabs the kid and he's like, ah, his fucking mouth, <laughs> weird cock eyes, and the kid's screaming and all the rest. He starts pulling this kid out, right? Uh, uh, uh. And David Duke stands up, presumably because he's heard the noise, and looks over. And because he can't see in the car, and the car isn't, the car isn't a rocking, so don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't come a knocking. Um, because nothing's happening, he looks up and goes, everything's fine. And then puts his head back down. <laughs> Meanwhile, we get a shot in the car where Roy's like, ah, and the kid's like, oh, <laughs> fucking. Get the, the kid gets pulled out, like, out of nowhere. And then finally, David Duke stands up and he sees a full grown pagan fucking, like, sex deity standing there, like, with his kid going, 
ah, and he's like, oh shit, I better do something. It's just he's not that far away. Aye, you know what I mean. And he gets he gets held back by that tiny little fake fence. Oh, oh. The, the fence, oh. the fence, the fence is the the, the fence up there with Declan O'Brien as the MVP of this movie. You would like to this fence is like fucking it's like Thor's hammer. Like only <laughs> only one man can lift. It's it's hilarious. He goes running up, shouting no no, and I've written here. He runs up shouting no no, but has lost the ability to operate a gate uh, <laughs> because he has he can't he, he's he's lost the ability to understand how gates work. Uh, he just and, collapses behind it, even though he's like two year old daughter pushed it open to go for a pee. Literally, you are, <laughs> you're literally stealing my words here. Hopeless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it though. Hopeless, he falls to his knees as Rawhead Rex bites down on his son. Um, <laughs> finally, he remembers how a gate works and then runs around the car and slams the car door shut and chases as he... The camera pans down to show the blood on the shoes and the old-school Casio watch in comic book. I wrote an old-school Casio watch. You might be... You're younger than me by almost a decade, which I don't like reminded uh, to me. Uh, but there was a time period where the coolest thing you could have fucking had was a Casio watch which had a calculator built in it. And your teachers back then would be like that. No, you, no, you can't use calculators in this math test here because it's not as if you'd be walking around with a calculator on you all the time. You'd be like, I've got a watch though, sir. Look at my watch which can only do like up to a thousand because of the size of the screen. I mean, this is before iPhones and all the rest, but I saw this Casio watch and I, I got a wee bit misty eyed. I begged for a Casio watch. I wanted it so bad. And I got you know, a piece of that shit is, watch. That is the watch used in most terrorist uh, bomb devices. The the Casio watch. I With a little calculator on it. Did not know that. So there you go. And what you're saying is Casio should be hauled across the, cr- the coals for war crimes. And I'm with you. They made shitty keyboards as well. My first keyboard that I ever played back in the day where I was learning was a Casio. And I had great demo sims, but when you went to play that motherfucker, shite. Shite. Be fair, most days only ever played the demo sounds and pretended that we were playing anyway. So. <laughs> Smile and wink at someone while you were yeah. not playing the notes that were in there. Love it. Love it. <laughs> uh, Duke runs into the woods. Um, basically trying to fucking get rawhead, and um, we then uh, we we cut to the police station as reporters are are taking questions and asking, uh, well, taking pictures and asking questions to the police. One of the coppers says, "We all have a job to do." which is novel because the police in this movie appear to have forgotten what that job is. And then the main detective walks into the room. I put here like a pound shop tagger. That which is like up pretty well, literally mate. only the Scottish people will understand. That's me, I'm <laughs> um, He swapped by questions, but he shuts them off with a casual no comment. Um, and then one reporter says, is there any connection with the other bodies? To which the detective says, yeah, they're all dead. Sassy as fuck. This guy right there, give this guy a commendation, make him in charge of the police. I fucking love him. I'm interested. You sass at a reporter saying, like, yeah, what, what do all these bodies have in, in common? They're all fucking dead. I'm like, yeah, high five. Um, another reporter, I love this, is the army being brought in? It's fucking three dead bodies. You know what I mean? Is the army being brought in? What are we doing here? Um... And the detect- it's also three dead bodies in Ireland in the 80s like- yeah, like, <laughs> it's the calmest like if a newspaper came out this is the calmest day like they have that thing where like, you, like one of those things where day since the incident with the amount of days in here <laughs> but it's like bodies up die today three is the lowest for a while um, <laughs> well, so the detective says why don't you get the hell out of here and then someone asks him um what you got, detective? Animal, vegetable, or mineral? I would have fucking arrested this reporter, locked it. I would have put him in fucking Guantanamo Bay. I would have fucking waterboarded this dick. Um, it's such a like, it's such a like a prickish question. I'm the fuck. I am judge. I am the law. 
You know what I mean? You fucking asses. Oh, I get these guys out here. Uh, but he opens the door, right, in disgust, and is confronted by David Duke, who says, Why don't you tell the man? What have you got? Like, I'm like, this, like Duke, I like you, but it's the, the wrong course of action. And the, the, the detective says, Look, mister. And Duke says, Animal, vegetable, or mineral? Like a petulant child. And the Duke says, uh, so the detective says, we're doing all we can. And Duke says, it's too late. Too goddamn late. And I'm like, did you or did you not drive your family out of town? Did you or did you not stop to take your child for a pee? Did you or did you not leave your other son abandoned in a vehicle? And did you or did you not forget how to operate a gate? I'm not, I'm, you know what, I'm going to go with here as, as against the grain and of the man as it is here. I'm with the police at this one. This is not the police's fault. No, definitely, the parents have to be held accountable. 100%, a lot of them, lock them up. Lock them, that always <laughs> works when you say that. Um, the detective says, we are, we'd appreciate your assistance. And Duke says, I've given your man here everything. Every second in detail. We've got a map. We've done drawings. And then the second detective says, it's the same as what the boy drew, sir. And then they show a picture, which I've written here. The picture that is shown is fucking terrible. Um, <laughs> it's like some, like, see if my, my nine-year-old daughter gave me this picture and said, look what I've drawn, Dad. I would tear it up and then, like, fucking send her <laughs> to her room. It's absolutely awful. <laughs> It's, it's not even a stick man raw head Rex, it's a squiggle with a red dot. And then you, know the this, <laughs> you know there's someone behind that that really spent time just listening to this like, oh my god man, my only contribution to cinema and it's yep. been lambasted. Uh, like, <laughs> assistant DP, a dis assistant producer, guy that drew raw head Rex. Um, I think, I, think the, the, I think it was when Clive Barker saw this drawing he was like that, never again. <laughs> um, I love this though like well, the detective looks at the picture and does what I said in my head he says what in God's name is this and I'm like, well, I don't like and, the, and Duke says of course darkness can be deceptive which I mean it was in fucking broad daylight that you saw it but whatever mate um, and the detective says okay I was wrong I'll grant you that I would not have caved into this I would have stuck to my guns and then Duke gets sassy. He's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, remember, his son has just been eaten by a monster and he's got time to be sassy about it. The detective says, believe me, we're going to find your... Believe me, we're going to find your son's killer. The valley is being searched by armed officers. I don't know why I'm doing it that way. And there's a slight list, but we'll stick with it. And Duke says... I'd, uh, I bet it's hiding in places you couldn't even guess at. And you want to know why? And the detective says, Enlighten me! And Duke says, I think it belongs here. I think this is its home from way back. And I'm like, this is riveting dialogue. <laughs> and the detective is like, Then we've got him, haven't we? If this is his territory, then he'll come back sooner or later. We all have to do is wait. And Duke says, wait, wait for what? More mistakes, more slaughter. And I'm like, he's getting too heated here. And to be honest with you, what's Duke's opinion here? And what, what, what is his role here? Is he like that? Oh, like, I, you, right, the police know where he is. We'll just go wandering there. Or is his view that we have to, like, comb the desert like it's space balls? I don't, <laughs> I don't get the role here. Like, I understand he's upset. I understand there's grief here. But David Duke is a nuisance right now. And I'm actually, mm. weirdly, once again, when the police says, look, Mr. Hambach, we understand you feel. And he cuts him off and says, you have no idea how I feel. And then he intensely stares at the detective and says, your goddamn stupidity is the reason my son is dead. Do you understand that? I'll get the goddamn thing myself. Mm. So... It's a very powerful scene here. I felt all emotional, stirred up, a small tear in the eye. You were watching this back as someone who originally, much like a lot of people who have seen the movie <laughs> once or twice, were like that. I don't know how Rex is fine. You were seeing this artistic prose played out on the screen and, and 
Did it not entertain you? Question mark. To be fair, when he looks over and Rohead Rex is at the car and you realise he's just ate the wee boy. That wee <laughs> boy's dead. Like that. Even watching it back, I'm like, I, I like it for going there. I like it for just not doing the usual where, or like, Rohead Rex should be able to rip that wee boy's arms off in oh, a God, second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he fights him back and forth as if the boy is struggling. And you're like, right, okay, he's going to survive. And two seconds later, no, nah, no, he's, he's gone. Did. He's <laughs> like, that's it. Lugs, lugs is out of here. And uh, I appreciate this five minutes for that bit happening, just for their commitment to the yep. to the the horror. A child has to die, and it will be the boy with the large ears. Yeah, but who did police... kind of deserve it? He was. Oh, hundred percent. Was... All the way through uh, this, he's been pushing things. He was getting involved in his mum and dad's failed ma- failing marriage. It's just... It was not very was... nice to his sister, to be honest with you. He's, no. a, he's a bit of a brat. But, like, when we switch to the police station here, this is some... I like this movie. I think it's very entertaining, but the dialogue here is fucking awful. <laughs> like, and by, like, like, David Duke, like, being holier than now, blaming the police for what's happened here, and the police go like that... Oh, I'm sorry. It's our fault that we didn't believe you when you came earlier on to say that there was a giant paganistic red-eyed monster on a hill. Sorry, that's our fault for 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 not believing in the supernatural world. As police officers, we should have taken that into account. It's like that. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know. To be to be fair, it is on their stained glass windows of their church. They, <laughs> this is they probably should be like. Wait, hold on, you've seen something that looked like that thing that we have depicted of well, being here. It, like, David Duke sees that right at the beginning of this film, then sees Rawhead Rex after it and doesn't put two and two together <laughs> until about 25 minutes from the end of this movie. And I'm like, if I walked into a church and I saw that stained glass window, it would be fucking seared into my brain. <laughs> I'd be looking for it everywhere. Anything that remotely, like if someone had one of those laser pens with a red eye, I would see the stained glass window. <laughs> I'd have fucking Nam like flashbacks. It's just it's it, it's hokey and it's like setting up the I'm gonna get it myself. And the detective says, <laughs> "I've written this wrong. Uh, I've written here look me Hallen back, which I don't think is right because that's not a sentence. I think he says <laughs> look Mister, look Mister Hallen back." And Duke says, "Go to hell, just go right to hell." And his wife is trying. I put here. The wife was trying very hard to squeeze a tear out and she violently rocks her daughter. She is shaking this child, the existing child, to the point that if she was an au pair caught in a fucking nanny cam, <laughs> this person would be arrested. Duke storms out. In the church, the verger is sitting alone and David Duke arrives with his notebook and heads straight to the stained glass window. That is your end of five minutes. Liam Rafferty. Uh, favourite line, your favourite scene in these five minutes? Yeah, it's just still when it eats, eats the wee boy. <laughs> Although you don't quite see it, just the fact that they went there and also that Rawhead Rex took the time and care to take his watch off, his shoes <laughs> off and place it neatly on the map next to the car after eating them. Uh, it shows you a kind of soft, gentler side to Rex that I, I feel that the rest of this film doesn't quite touch. He's like that. Are those are those nineteen eighty six vans? I can't fucking eat them. <laughs> just put them down there. <laughs> there. Oh my god! Like that. It's, a, it's a Casio. <laughs> I've always wanted one of them, but my wrist is too big to hold it. I will leave it here, and hopefully it will be bequeathed to someone else. Um, I I like to me. I'm I'm kind of similar to you. I like David Duke not being able to operate a gate is the fucking one of the greatest <laughs> things in 1986 like his inability where he's like trying to move it a couple of times then he just eventually goes no and then oh. like resigns himself to his knees only to within five seconds later stand up and go wait one second it opens it's it's like it's like cavemen inventing fire it's the fucking greatest <laughs> It's just like I uh, like the fucking monkey men finding the monolith in two thousand and one a space odyssey. It's like it, it's it's career defining cinema, and I love it for every second of it. It's not a great scene, to be honest. This is the the linking part to get David Duke 
it all back in the village mm. for the final 35 minutes of this movie. Um, and in that, I feel it's it's the dialogue more than anything that kind of lets this one down. The detective being the way they are doesn't feel realistic. And David Duke not being able to cry at all for his slain son is a bit of a problem here. Um, as a result, it's a bit clumsy. But I'm glad that I stumbled through these clumsy five minutes with you, Liam Raffery. I'm glad that I did it. Yeah. We, we do things together not often enough. Some people <laughs> say we should do them more often. I would agree with that. Uh, we do a show called Jaws of Shit and Other Regrettable Outbursts. It's available on teapotscast.com. But you have a rich archive that you were telling me off here where people are still discovering that rich archive and out of context sending you messages, which is a bit confusing. But Scott Liam vs. Evil is a show that has a ton of content out there that you can go and enjoy right now if you want to listen to more of Liam Rafferty. Where can people check it out? Scott and Liam versus evil.com and Spotify and all those other places where you can listen to people talking nonsense in the movies <laughs> for extended periods of time. Yeah, but you guys go you guys go in, you're like that, you know what we're doing this week? Like Satan's Blade. And we're like, you're like no one needs to do a another show on that, and you're like, watch me. Uh, and I love that about you guys. Never change. The, and by the end of the hour, we've maybe mentioned Satan's Blade once. We've talked so about was three the, minutes. Yeah, of de- it. You guys did Demon Wind, did you not? Uh, yes, we did. I mean, yeah. that in itself was worth checking out. That, that is. I'd actually rather be watching Demon Wind <laughs> than the five minutes of Rawhead Drex. Just saying. Someone right now just threw their audio device around the room in disgust and looked at me like, <laughs> damn you, Liam Rafferty, damn you to hell. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for checking out this episode. I don't know what the release order is, so this might be the final one. It might be right at the start. If it is, how confusing it is for you as a listener. All I'm going to say is, the entire month of October, there's an episode of Podcasts Under the Stairs dropping every single day. So if this is not the last episode that I will be speaking to you tomorrow. So please take care of yourselves out there. Thanks for listening. I will speak to you next time. <laughs>